Okay, in this quiz, you're given a very strange looking piecewise defined function. Sine of the absolute value of x divided by the absolute value of sine of x when x is not equal to pi n. And what does this notation mean? It means that x is not an integer. That's what n is supposed to represent, an integer times pi. And when it is, it is equal to an integer times pi, so what does pi n mean? Well, it means 0, it means pi, it means 2 times pi, it means 3 times pi, and also the negative ones too negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, etc. So you use different formulas in these different cases. It's equal to 1 for all of these values, and it's equal to this weird formula when x is not equal to pi n, when it's, when it's not any of these specific values. All right, so I mean, the first thing we want to do is, in order to, to graph this, we want to kind of get rid of these absolute value signs. I, I wish they, they weren't there. So let's notice what, what, what happens when we say um, stop. So going back, how do we get rid of absolute value signs? All right, so let me just make an even larger, larger piecewise for this function f. So you adding new junctures. We already have infinitely many junctures. We're going to add new junctures because we realize Every time sine, uh, every time absolute value of x shifts, uh, every time x is equal to zero, the absolute value of x shifts, and we get a juncture. So that's the general rule for these absolute value things. You can get rid of them, and they introduce a new juncture at your uh, in your piecewise defined function. So remember that this is equal to x if x is bigger than or equal to zero, and it's negative x if x is less than zero. Right? So here, if x is not equal to pi n, so we're still avoiding all of those points, you know, pi, negative 2, etc., and x is negative, so we're interested in the negative case first, then this is given by the formula sine of x divided by the absolute value of sine of x. If, on the other hand, x is not equal to pi n, and it's now positive or zero, then we would, uh, sorry, ooh, made a mistake. Right from the beginning, I made a mistake here. When x is negative, absolute value of x is negative x. So I should have put a minus x in there. And when it's positive, we can re remove the absolute value signs without having to put anything. Sine of x divided by the absolute value of sine of x. And then finally, it's equal to 1 whenever x does happen to equal one of those weird values. And by the way, why, I mean, just before I, I continue on, why are we so interested in these weird values, multiples of pi? Because that's exactly where sine of x is 0. Sine of any multiple of pi is equal to 0. That's the, those are the zeros of sine, uh, the sine curve when you graph it out. Or if you like to think geometrically in terms of the circle, which I do, a multiple of pi, well, there's 0 pi. 180 degrees, 360, 180, 360. Notice that it's just these two points again and again and again. These uh, And the y-coordinates of these points, which is the sine, is going to be 0 each time. So it's clear that sine of pi n is always going to equal, equal 0. So because of that, this denominator here isn't even defined. So you would have uh, 0 over 0 here, or something like that. Yeah, you would have 0 over 0, and... Uh, and so it wouldn't be defined, so we have to, we have to, you know, if it's going to be defined at these points at all, we have to come in and step in and, and tell it to be equal to something. So that's just an aside. That's why we're, we have this weird kind of second component to it. But back to the problem at hand. Right now, we've gotten rid of one of the absolute value signs, but we haven't gotten rid of both of them. So here we have to worry about where is, so remember, we introduce a new juncture whenever you have these absolute value signs. You introduce a new juncture wherever the, whatever's inside the absolute value sign turns zero. So the question then is, uh, when does sine of x equal zero? Because since we're taking the absolute value of it, that's gonna, in, gonna be the juncture. So in other words, let me even write it out with words. It's gonna take time, but it's worth it. All values of x for which sine of x 
equals zero will be new junctures in our piecewise defined formula. Well, there'll be new junctures uh, when we eliminate the absolute values on the bottom, the absolute value of sine of x. All right, you look at everything inside the absolute value bars and you ask, okay, when's it zero? Because that's where the shifts are gonna occur. <clears throat> so, so where is this zero? Well, I just drew a picture for you that told us. It's exactly at these particular points. So at these points in question, that's where sine is shifting from positive to negative. It's, I think it's actually worth drawing, at least sketching, what the sine curve looks like, just to remind ourselves. It looks something like this. And going off in the negative direction, it looks something like that. Okay, so where is it zero? All of these are the multiples of pi. That's negative pi. That's negative two pi. There's zero itself. There's pi. There's two pi, etc. Okay, those are all the places where the sine graph is zero. So notice that between negative two pi and pi, sine of x is positive. So the absolute value of sine of x is just sine of x because the absolute value of a positive number is itself. But between uh, negative pi and zero in this region, uh, it's equal to negative itself. So absolute value of sine of x is equal to negative sine of x. Right? And then it swaps again from zero to pi. From uh, pi to two pi is it's negative and so on. Negative because the absolute value of a negative number is negative itself, right? All right, so we're seeing some very weird pattern here and you know, putting it into notation is, is gonna be a little bit awkward here. But it means that between, in fact, I, I really don't want to even put it into notation. If you don't mind, I'm gonna try and explain this without the notation because the notation is perhaps gonna be even more complicated than everything else that we've been doing. All right, so without going into more notation, we're just gonna try and directly draw the graph. So here's why I'm so confident that I can do this without having to actually you know, figure out what these formulas look like. Look, we have formulas of the form sine of negative x over the absolute value of sine of x. Now, I don't know that. The absolute value of sine of x is gonna, deter is gonna depend on whether sine is positive or negative. But you know what? If it's positive, all you'd have to do is remove that. And what would sine of negative x divided by sine of x be? Well, remember, negative signs pull out of sine, so that's just negative sine of x over sine of x, which is just negative one. So whenever we, when we do drop the absolute value signs, if they disappear entirely, in other words, in this region, these, these green positive humps, it's gonna equal negative one according to that first formula. So the first formula is gonna give us negative one when sine is positive. But what happens when sine is negative? Well, then you'd multiply it by a negative on the bottom, right? The absolute value of sine of x would be negative sine of x if sine is, is, if sine is negative. That minus sine would carry here, everything would cancel, you'd get positive one. So it would also give us positive one when sine is less than zero. And that would be these black humps, the, the humps that are you know going down. Okay, so it's either gonna give me a negative one or a positive one, depending as whether the sine is positive or sine is negative. Now, what about this other formula? It's, it has sine not of negative x, but just sine of x. And so again, if we eliminate the absolute value signs and sine happens to be positive, they're gonna cancel and give us one. If we eliminate the absolute value signs and sine is negative, then there's a negative sign here, they'll cancel and they'll give us negative one. Okay, so when it's positive, when sine is positive, we get positive one. So this is this actually works in exactly the opposite way. We get positive one when sine is positive, and we get negative one when sine is negative. So this is really weird, and, and but it's kind of interesting because notice that at the end of the day, every value in the world is always either going to be a negative one or a positive one, and we just have to figure out when. So let's actually go and graph it, and I'm gonna actually try and carry all of this along with me. So here's what we figured out for 
what f of x looks like. All right, now let's switch over to blue and jump in. Okay, first things first, let's mark off all of the multiples of pi on this axis. So there's my negative pi, there's my pi, and so on. You guys got the picture. Hold on a second here. Okay, so at each of those points, remember, whenever x is a multiple of pi, it's equal to 1. So I'll come up here, and we'll just draw a little 1 there, draw a little 1 there, 1 there, and so on, I including uh, 0. 0 is a multiple of pi. It's 0 times pi, right? And in fact... Let's be clear. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can switch colors as I draw this. So blue means it's gonna be these points. Okay. So now let's swap over to red, because I want to know when is this gonna equal negative one. So notice that here we're avoiding the points that are multiples of pi, and x is negative. So okay, my red is only gonna be here with negative values of x. It's only gonna be on this negative x axis. And, uh, you know, for red, I think I'm going to devote the color red to denoting the situation where sine is positive and therefore the whole thing is equal to negative 1. So, I, I forget, where is sine positive? On the negative axis? Well, there's my graph of sine again. Sine is positive between negative pi and 2 pi. So that's going to be a red region for me. So between negative pi and, and negative 2 pi, for example, the value of the function, remember, we did a little algebra and we said it was negative 1. So actually, between negative pi and 2 pi here, it's equal to negative 1. And then we skip over to sine being uh, negative. We skip over to sine being negative here. And then we come back again later on, and it looks like this again. All right, so that represents here what's going on in red, just this first situation, where x is negative and uh, sine is positive. Sine of x is, happens to be positive. Let me switch colors again. I'm going to switch over to gray now. My gray is going to denote the situation where x is still negative, so we're still in the negative uh, axis, this, this negative part. But now I want to know when is sine negative, because that's where my function is going to equal positive 1. So where's sine negative? Well, it's negative here between 0 and negative pi. And then again, it just skips every, every so often. So here, it's going to actually, my function is actually going to equal 1 in this region here. So what you'll notice is that it kind of fills in. Those blue dots are, it fills in the gaps between these blue dots. So the blue dots fill in the gray uh, circles. There would be another gray circle here that would go off. Okay, and that represents this. Now let's switch over to green. Green is going to be the situation where now x is greater than zero. It's positive. It's not a multiple of pi. Those are still those are already done in blue. Remember, and I'm interested in the case where sine is positive, because that's where my function is going to equal positive one. So where is sine positive? going in the positive x-axis, well, I've already done those in green, haven't I? There, there, between 0 and pi, you know, just after 2 pi, and so on. So it's here. Then it's from 2 pi to 3 pi, etc. And I know that it kind of looks like open circles, but they're open circles based on the color. But remember that they are literally filled in by these blue dots. So they are filled in officially. The function's value is 1 at negative pi, because it's a blue dot. OK, so I think we have one more color available to us, black. And in black, we're going to worry about this last situation that I haven't drawn. When x is positive, we're in the positive uh, x-axis. It's not a multiple of negative of pi n. It's not a multiple of pi. And sine is negative, because that's when my function's going to equal negative 1. Well, again, sine being negative just alternates every other time here. So my function is going to equal negative 1 here. So I've color-coded this, and then it just goes on to wherever. I've color-coded this so that we can see kind of where, you know, where each of these things are coming from. 
All right, there's the red. We know that's true because we're using this formula, these two conditions. So the, the two conditions are, you know, you're worried about both x and sine of x. You know, okay, so is sine positive or is it negative? Is x positive or is it negative? And that gives us four situations. And the case where uh, x is positive and where sine is negative, that's what I've been doing in black on, on the graph. The case where x is positive but sine is negative, I'm sorry, where, where, where x and sine are both positive, that's what I've been doing in green on the graph. That's not green. I never made the switch. Sorry. That's green on the graph. Okay, what's red on the graph is where uh, x is negative but sine is positive. X is negative, sine Sorry, I've screwed everything up with that. Hopefully I made it clear. I'm not even gonna go and do it. It wouldn't be too hard, but I think it's it's not necessary. But the point is, this is what the graph of it looks like. You guys can fill it in for your for yourselves or hopefully you've understood it up to this point. So finally, now that we've drawn the picture, you might wonder, well, you know, are these things continuous at these multiples of pi? Well, clearly not. There are these breaks in the function. You can't draw it without lifting up your pencil. But you know what? It is continuous coming from the left here. And I mean, the reason it fails to be continuous is because the limits don't even exist. The left hand limit here is going to be one. The right hand limit here is going to be negative one. Here it's going to be negative one from the left, positive one from the right, etc. So the limit of f as x approaches any multiple of pi doesn't exist because the left and right hand limits will always disagree.